Building your spiritual capacity. 1 Peter 5 verse 10 says, But the God of all grace, who has called us to his eternal glory by Christ Jesus, after you have been through suffering for a short time, will, make himself, um, will himself make you complete, stable and strong, laying a foundation in you. I often start my messages by sharing stories about when I was younger, and um, I would like to share about something I used to do when I was younger. I was kind of addicted to folding paper planes when I, uh, when I was a child, and I spent hours folding them. Um, I only knew what little folds you could do, and I would spend hours practicing folding them, trying to get these stupid plain pl uh, paper to fly the way I wanted, because it never really worked properly. And somebody one day showed me like a new fold I could do that just, it seemed to be really cool. It just did cool flips and it flew how I wanted. And so I played around with this for hours and I eventually got it to do so many cool things in the air when I threw it. It was like, it was just so satisfying. And I discovered there were hundreds of different paper planes you could fold. They've written whole books on this. And it became, it really became a bit of an addiction when I was a kid. I used to spend hours in our open area there just throwing planes around. And the more I did it, the more eventually I could fold them any time. I could just take a piece of paper and fold them and throw them and they would do what I wanted them to do. And when I was preparing for this message, I thought this was kind of a really good allegory of how it is in your spiritual life. It's like you have tools that are given to you and you need to practice using them. You need to practice folding them over and over again until eventually they work the way that they're supposed to. And then all you have to do is give it a little push and they just work and they fly the way that you want them to. Um, if you read our Way of Blessing series, you know the principle of building up a laser inside until it becomes powerful and you let it out. If you haven't seen it yet, we just released a new book in the Way of Blessing series, and I would recommend that you look at that. But that's, that's really the same kind of principle that you build up inside until you have that power and that capacity inside that you can release for the Lord. God wants to blow his wind on you and use what he's given you. He wants to put his anointing on you and so that you can step out and do what it is that you want, he wants you to do for him. But are you ready for it? Have you built up that capacity on the inside for him to use? So Any time that you want to do something new for the Lord, perhaps he takes you on a new journey or he calls you to some new thing in your life, he gives you a new goal, it always is like a journey and you go through several different stages. And I want to share with you some of those stages in my message today so that you know what to expect as you go through this journey and build that capacity and those tools that God has given you so that you can fully embrace what he has for you. So God has a destiny for you and for your life. Maybe he's already showed you the direction that you're going and you may get excited about it. Just like on a journey, you might get excited about the goal and where you're going. Some people maybe they might panic on a new journey because it seems so far and they've never been to this place before. As you know, I'm more of the analytical type, so I'm usually the one who panics a bit more when we're going somewhere we've never been before. But it's too late. You're on this road now that God has set for you. And you need to learn to build your capacity so that you are ready for this journey that is ahead of you. But God has already given you all that you need to make it through this journey. And maybe you've been told this so many times, God has already put in you all that you need. That doesn't necessarily mean that you know how to use it yet or that you know how, what's going to happen. God has put into you the faith to follow through with what he has for you. In Romans 13, verse 3, it says, For I say through the grace given to me to everyone that is among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to be thinking, but to be of a sound mind as God dealt out to everyone a portion of faith. So God has given you the faith that you need to follow through with this. That doesn't necessarily mean that you know yet how to do it. You're going to learn along the way how to fold that plane and how to, how to make it through. The faith gives you the strength to keep going. It gives you what you need to follow through even when you fall down. 
even when it doesn't seem to be going the way that you expected. Faith is what takes you through and keeps you persisting and trying again and again until you make it through. So you have, but you have a choice. God has given you a choice in this. He doesn't force you to follow the way that he has for you. Maybe he wants you to try to fold different paper planes and see what works for you. Try, different, try folding different ones. Try different things that... Try doing different things for the Lord. Try different ministries. Because as you practice those, maybe you'll find there's one that just seems to work really well for you. There's one that when you fold it every time and you throw it, it just flies perfectly. It works the way that you want. And, and it, just, it just works the way that God intended it for you. But to get to that place, you have to try. You have to try each of the different things. You have to put an effort into learning to use those tools that God has given you. So that means investing in the right things. We all know about the law of sowing and reaping and how what you reap, you get a reward. And the picture with the paper planes really is a good example of that. If you would sow, but sow time into learning to fold them the way they're supposed to be, then you can reap a reward in the future because all you have to do is fold it and throw it and it just works again in the future. You can turn a little bit of effort into much growth in your spiritual life by taking the time to invest into the Lord, by taking the time to do what he has called you to do, no matter how small it is or insignificant. Just get, wait for him to give you that opportunity and keep pushing through until you see that it's working in your life. So God wants to use you, but do you desire to work for him and do his work? He wants to use you then. So you have to start by just giving him what you have available right now. Maybe you only know how to fold a small little plane that doesn't fly very well yet. Make that available to the Lord now and let him take it and use it. Maybe he will blow his wind on that and suddenly it will take flight like never before. Maybe the tools that you have are what God has given you right now. And that is enough to actually take you through. He is the greatest investment. All you have to do is invest into him everything that you have. He asks 100% from you. Give him all that you have and you'll see that he will take it and make it fly like never before. He uses what is available, but you have to be prepared to follow through with what he has called you to do. So as you practice the ministry that you're in right now or um, give out wherever you can, the Lord will take it and use it. He expects you to follow through with it until the end. As long as it is available to him, he can use it. The other, uh, recently, I heard a, a cute story that I thought was a very good example of, of uh, giving the Lord what you have. Someone shared the story about a gardener or a landscaper, and he came and he found this plot of land, and it was a mess. There was rocks lying everywhere. The grass was overgrown. So he got in there and started clearing it up and getting it ready. And he put the rocks nicely and stacked them, and he mowed the lawn, and he planted new seeds. And a couple of years later, he had a beautiful looking garden. It was all in order. Everything was perfect. And someone came to him and saw this beautiful garden and they wanted to compliment him, but they didn't want him to take all the credit. So they said, well, what a lovely garden you and the Lord have together here. And he said, well, yes, the, it's a creation the Lord made here, but you should have seen it when the Lord was keeping it by himself. And I thought that was just a really good example of it. At first, I thought, well, this is kind of an insult to the Lord, if you think about it, that his creation wasn't able to maintain itself. But that's the way that God made it. He works in this world through you and through the tools that he's given you. He created the world. He created all of the plants and the, the, um, the pieces that you need. But he works through you. You are the one who has to get it in order and put it together so that it can function correctly. The Lord wants to grow you right now today. He chooses to use what you have available to him. And often 
it's actually what he gave you. Maybe he put you in a place where you would get these tools. He gave them to you. So they are from him. But he still waits for you to give them back to him before he can use them. And the Lord can use anything that you make available to him, no matter how small. He doesn't need your strength. He doesn't need your great abilities. Sometimes those are not from him. Sometimes those are your own abilities. And he can use them if he wants to, but it's entirely his choice. He uses what you make available to him. And maybe you think you have a great strength in this area. Maybe you think you're amazing at a certain ministry. And then God might tell you that he wants to use you in this other area that you're not so great in. That's entirely his choice of what he wants to use you for. But if he wants to use you in an area that you are weak in, that means he wants to grow you there. That means he wants to increase your capacity in that ministry or whatever it is that you are doing for him. I've learned as I, as I was growing up spiritually and trying to mature in the Lord, I often thought, well, I'll just give it time and it will kind of happen naturally. I don't know how I'm going to get to that place that someone else has because they often look like they're so far ahead, like you're never going to get to that place. But to get to that place, to grow to a new level in the Lord and in ministry, you have to build your capacity and you have to start by using what he's given you so far. Start by building yourself up slowly, one step at a time. And there are three different areas that you can work on that the Lord will use in your life. First, you need to build up yourself in your spirit. That's the most important area that you have to build your capacity in because the spirit is important. And the first most important area you can do that is by reading the word, by putting scriptures in until they start to sink deep in and grow. And you don't realize it when you're reading the word. Sometimes you maybe do your daily readings and you don't even remember it sometimes if you weren't paying attention. But if you keep feeding the word in, there is going to be growth taking place in your spirit. Each seed that you put into your spirit is going to grow and make more capacity inside that the Lord can use. And you don't even realize it as you're reading, but you are growing spiritually. You need to spend time with the Lord and in the spirit. That's just as important as reading the word. In, um, in our way of blessing, we talk about setting up your windmill so that the Lord can blow his, uh, his wind on it and you can start to get a flow in your spirit. You need to spend more time with the Lord, spend time seeking Him, spend time in prayer with Him, because that's going to also allow Him to pour into your spirit new gifts and new tools that you can use for Him. So that's very important. It's the most important area that you need to develop in your spiritual life. The second area is in your soul. And this is the area that most people usually focus on more. They usually focus just on knowledge and learning. They like to study all the time for the ministry, thinking that that's going to make them able now to do it. And it is very important because the Lord needs to have those tools available to him that he can use in your life. But it's not as important as your spirit. But you can develop your soul. And the more that you put in, the more you'll develop, the more... Uh, tools the Lord will have available to use in your life. But he is going to use tool, uh, whatever tools you put in. You don't have to put in a lot of knowledge for him to start using you, but the more knowledge you put in, the more you have available for him to use. Recently, I had a renewed desire to start reading books more again. And at first, I was just kind of... Um, it was kind of more actually just kind of a quest for knowledge that I thought, oh, I'll just read a lot of stuff so that I know a lot of stuff. And then I discovered certain areas I started reading where I felt like I felt this is where the Lord wants me to start reading. He wants me to learn more in this area. So I felt like it was the Lord leading me to increase my knowledge in that area so that I'm prepared for what he has for me. And the Lord will lead you as you start to develop, as you try to develop your capacity You'll find you might start out in your own strength um, doing what you think you have to develop, but the Lord will lead you to the area that you need to develop. He will show you what you need to learn and what uh, he wants for you to do.
The other area, of course, is in your physical body. The Lord needs to use your body in this earth to extend his kingdom in this earth. So if you have physical strength, he will use those. If you are strong physically, he can use that. Maybe you're not um, very strong physically. You've got other less obvious strengths in the, in the natural. The Lord can use those if you make them available to him. And you can increase those so that you are more prepared to go out and do what he has called for you, uh, called you to do. <laughs> it's an ongoing process that you have to do all the time. It doesn't just come naturally if you don't do anything. If you sit and wait for the Lord to do everything, he has already done what he needs to do. He has, he's prepared to put his anointing on you. He's waiting for you now to step out and develop those tools so that he can anoint them and he can um, send you out to do his work in this earth. I used to often look at others, like I said, and wonder how I, would get, how I could get to that place. It's really just, it's a process of one step at a time, doing what the Lord tells you to do right now, and then he will increase it, and that you'll find your capacity increasing. And over time, if you do this, you eventually look back and you wonder how you came so far, and you realize that the Lord really has done amazing things in your life. God can make you good at something. I always wanted, um, you know, the scripture says you have an anointing from the Holy One and you know all things. And I thought, well, I don't know all things. I mean, I can't just tap in and know something I don't know, you know. <laughs> and the Lord can anoint you and maybe give you an ability you never had before. But he can also use your experience. He'll take your experience and grow it far beyond what you would normally have. Now, someone else may have that same experience and not grow quite the same, because the Lord has taken it and he has used it to grow you into a new level. Now, there's one part that always seems to come in the journey, and it's the part that I hate the most. It's, it's like a dry spell where it seems that there's nothing happening anymore. Maybe you've been going on for the Lord, you've been trying to develop your ministry, you've been trying to do what he's called you to do, but it's like you face a dry spell now. Everything's quiet. All the stuff you do just seems pointless now. It seems like nothing is happening anymore. And this, I find this always comes in everything new that I do. It's like you started out excited, but then you reach this point now where it's just burned out and there's nothing more anymore. It feels like, as uh, David said, you're walking through the shadow of the valley of death. There's nothing around you anymore. There's there doesn't seem to be any point in going on. Um, it always seems to fade the excitement. But as they say, it's always darkest before the dawn. Sometimes it seems like the enemy's winning and your efforts are pointless and the Lord has left you. But that's the time when you should get excited because something new is up ahead. The Lord has something exciting. When you feel at the lowest like that, God has something great in store for you, and it could be that the enemy is not happy about it. He's thrown everything that he has at you so that you don't break through into that new thing. God never fades. His excitement never fades. His newness never fades. He never wants you to lose that joy and excitement. So it's really hard when you face this time because it feels like the Lord is so far away. But he is waiting there for you to pass through this. He is always looking forward to what's next. He's waiting for you to keep going until you reach that next stage. And he has something new for you up ahead right now. Often things seem really impossible. In the natural, I've had this often. You've probably had this experience where you're trying to do something. You're trying to, maybe you have a craft project or a new creative project or maybe you're trying, you're trying to do something new that you haven't done before, and you hit the stage where you just it seems impossible. You're never going to learn how to do this properly the way it should be. But then sometimes if you take a break and you come back again, suddenly you experience that breakthrough. Suddenly it's like you go to a new level and you're able to do it, and the Lord has a breakthrough for you today. Are you facing an impossible situation today? Well, God has a breakthrough coming for you. He wants to bring you through. He's waiting for you to come out of that dark place, out of that seemingly endless desert, 
if you would just keep following through and keep walking forward and looking to him. That is when your faith is really tested. That's when the faith that he's given you is tested. Where Are you willing to follow through now for the Lord or are you going to allow the enemy to overcome you? Now is when you face the greatest attack of the enemy and you can overcome him and step into all that God has for you. So eventually the breakthrough does come and um, you maybe you feel on top of the world again. You forget the struggle that you went through and it seems like you're finally broken through in all that the Lord has for you. But that's not the end of the journey yet. There's always more, there's always another goal for you to go, f- go through. Are you at the place that God wants you to be right now? Maybe you've reached the place where he, uh, w- w- that he wants for you. Maybe you have been doing his work and everything seems to be good. Maybe you've reached the goal he aimed for you and you finally overcame that blockage. But that's not the end of the journey. Every new thing that God gives you faces this kind of journey. Every new ability that God gives you faces a similar kind of thing. You always have to build yourself up spiritually and face that attack of the enemy. And you should always be ready for where God takes you next. Maybe he's going to set you out on a new goal, uh, a new journey or a new goal. But you've been through this before and you know what to expect. And God is going to increase you just like before. And you will see that breakthrough in what he has called you to do. His work is never done. He's going to use you in any capacity that you make available to him. But you have to start by building it up. Maybe he's using you right now in the ministry you're in because you've built that up. You've built that capacity for him. You've given it to him and he's using it. But maybe he wants to use you in another area. And if you are prepared to let him take you through that journey, you can find a breakthrough and experience a new level in the spirit and a new anointing on you when you are ready to follow through. It said in the beginning scripture that the Lord laid a foundation in you. He promised that he would do this. All of your struggles and successes, all of your triumphs, everything that you've gone through has laid a foundation in you. It's built a foundation that the Lord can use, that he can build on in your life, and nothing can take that away from you now because the Lord has taken you through and you followed through with what he called you to do. In uh, Philippians 3, verse 13, this is a well-known scripture, I'm sure you know, it says, Brothers, I do not consider myself to have attained, but this one thing I do, forgetting those things that are behind and reaching forth to those things which are ahead, I press towards the goal for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. Your spiritual capacity is growing even now. Each time you look to him, each time you invest in him, every step you take to follow through with what God has called you to, your spiritual capacity will grow. Even if you can't see it right now, even if it seems to be just a minor growth, there is growth taking place as long as you invest into the Lord, as long as you're willing to follow through with what he has for you. He will grow you spiritually. You can't allow yourself to slow down or stagnate. You can't stop going forward because you need to keep developing those things that God has for you. And he will continue to grow them in you. And he will uh, raise you up. Now, as you've done that and as you've given to him what you have available, the Lord can blow his wind. And as I said, no matter what size of paper airplane you have, no matter what you're able to do, the Lord can blow his wind on it now and make it fly. You're ready to fly because the Lord can blow his wind and it'll just take flight and he'll use it the way that it was intended and he'll use it for the extension of his kingdom. You know, in South Africa, we often have uh, load shedding where they turn the power off for a short while and... You've got to be ready because we're, we're completely off for a few hours. Sometimes the power will just bomb because the, the, it cut, and you never know how long you're going to be off for. So I developed a system where I have cables running through the house, and we have put a generator outside. And I did this over time kind of eventually. I bought, 
I bought more cables and I eventually got a system. I know which cable goes where and I run it through the whole house and everyone's got power. And it took me a little while to get that, but now when the power goes off, all I have to do is plug all those cables in and everything is connected and everything is available. If you are ready for the Lord to move, if you've developed those tools he has for you, then all you have to do is plug into him and everything will flow through, the, your power will flow through and your tools will work the way that he intended. If you are ready for him, if you're ready right now, then all you have to do is ask him to come and blow his wind on you and his anointing will come on you and it will take control of what you made available to him and you'll be able to do what he has called you to do. So what have you been folding in the last while? What paper planes have you been folding? Are you ready for that little push now? You feel like you've got a good tool here that you can just push and it's going to fly. Because that's all it takes is a little push once you've developed that. Just a little push of his anointing and you can take flight right now. So keep folding those paper planes. Keep folding them and keep practicing. Keep trying a new area of your ministry. Keep asking the Lord for that new thing that he has for you. If you're experiencing an impossible situation right now, then don't give up hope because the Lord has a breakthrough for you. Keep on pushing forward and keep on looking to him for that breakthrough. Get excited now and be ready for it because it's coming. The Lord is going to take what you have and he's going to make it take flight and he's going to give you that breakthrough that you've never experienced before. Once you've built it, he will give you that push and it's going to happen. So ask the Lord for that today. Lord, I want to ask that each person watching this, that you would blow your wind on them now. That you would take them, that you would take whatever tool it is they've made available for you, to you now, and that you would blow your wind. And I see that many people have, have done this even now, and they've been doing this for a while. You, had, you have just this small little tool that you have available, and you've given it to the Lord and you've earnestly desired and waited for him to grow it, and it doesn't seem to be growing the way that you expected. And I want to ask you, Lord, now to blow your wind on those people, Lord. Show them that you are in control, and that even now it is coming, that breakthrough that they are waiting for. That they do not lose hope, that they do not lose sight of the goal that you have set for them. And each of them, as they hold up that tool that you have available to them, that you will take it and use it the way that you intended. I thank you, Father, for each one who has, who has gone forward and seen that growth, that they will continue to grow into all that you have for them, that they will continue to experience your anointing that will come down upon them and use all that you have for them. And I thank you, Lord, for the privilege today of being able to share your word with each one. I thank you that it will go forth and that each person knows now that they can step forward with boldness and that you have that new an exciting thing for them. In Jesus' name, amen.